Hello, my name is Robert Mitchell, and today ElectroPages is at Embedded World Nuremberg. And today I'm joined by Brendan Slay from NXP. Hi. And so today you're going to be talking about the uh, MCU Expresso uh, environment and how it's changed. Is, is that right? Is That's that... correct, yeah. yeah. So we, we did a major announcement last week around our desire to be the leaders of development experience for yep. the general purpose microcontroller market. Yep. So yeah, I wanted to tell you some more about that. Fantastic. Now, if I understand correctly, the, 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 the products you're introducing and, and bringing it under this sort of like single umbrella, is it right to say that they're sort of targeting the STM32 type microcontrollers, that, that sort of type of like mid-range to low-range 32-bit uh, architectures? That's right. I think really in the microcontroller market, we go all the way from the very low end up to the highest, of course, highest yeah. performance. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're in the same, we're battling away with ST, Infineon, Renesis, these kind of companies. So you've got a slideshow here, um, and I think, I, think, I think the best thing to do really is just for you to go through and we can see yeah. what's going on. Okay, all done. So, um, as I said, this is all about our aim to uh, send a clear message to the market of what we're trying to do, and that is to give them the best developer experience. Yeah. And that means a few different things. So, um, and we wanted to put those under a cohesive umbrella, as it were. So, the first one is around delivering options for the using the best, most modern tools, so yep. the customers can choose the development environment they want and not locking them around saying, if you want to use this MCU from LXP, yeah. it's really cool, but you must use our tools or you have to use this particular third party. Um, and then going along with that, um, there's a growing momentum behind the open source community and some very, very strong open source projects like Zephyr and so on. And uh, so we want to make sure those tools are going to work with those open source projects. And then third party software as well. We invest a lot in our partner network and we want to make sure customers can easily uh, pick up and use that third party software and again in a consistent and smooth way. And it's all about not locking customers to proprietary solutions because yeah. although that might seem, well, why would you not want to make NXP very sticky at the customer? Well, our philosophy is we do want to do that, but we want to do it in a way that the customer trusts us, comes to us and know that they're going to get a great tools and software experience and be stuck with that way, not by trying to lock them down. So there's four different aspects to our announcement and what we're doing in that strategy. So we're adding a, a new uh, extension for Visual Studio Code called M2 Expresso for Visual Studio Code. Uh, we're adding support for open CM system packs for middleware delivery. And we're introducing an application launch pad, which is a GitHub-based repository of code, or so what, but what we're doing in that is making it much more accessible and easy to navigate and find the code you want so you can leverage expertise NXP has. And then an open source based HAL to make it easier to migrate between devices. Okay, so just to give a bit of background on why, why do we think we're the ones that can achieve this goal of being the best in developer experience. So we have a lot of experience in, in a proven history rather in delivering innovation. So NXP was the first company to offer a Flash-based ARM MCU for general purpose use, not one in an ASSP or in a phone or something like that. When you say flash-based, you mean like the memory on the chip on itself, chip flash. Yeah, not external? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So we were the first to do that, and there's been lots of other innovations. It's not the appropriate place to go into all that, but a yeah. more recent one, as another example, was uh, we took an MPU chassis or chassis, depending where you're coming from, yeah, yeah. and we replaced the Cortex A core with a Cortex M core. Did some other cool stuff and the IMX RT family was born, giving some pretty mind-blowing performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've continued that family too. But we've also did, done these things on the tool side as well. So we innovated around LPC Expresso IDE with boards that went with it at a, a very good price point. We had processor expert from the Freescale routes that was a, in a very innovative tool. We've taken those learnings and we, we converged our tools together into the very coherent and popular M2 Expresso ecosystem in 2017. That's when we launched that brand. And now we're kind of taking that further, kind of a next generation, if you like. On the open source project side, as already mentioned, you know, we've, we were a founder member of the Zephyr project. We're very strongly behind Matter. And there's lots of other open source things we've been doing too. And to promote open source standards along with projects, we also have been working with ST, uh, our main competitor, as it were, 
uh, and ARM, of course, to develop the uh, details of the OpenCNC pack standards for code delivery. That must be awkward, like investing. Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> to be frenemies, you know. So we're frenemies. All, all big boys and girls, so we, we're very professional, but yeah, it is interesting. Um, and then, you know, we've also been working hard on partner relationships for many, many years, so we continue to support them through our website and so on, but we taking up to a next level of giving a very consistent way for them to deliver code where they don't have to customize every yeah. vendor. Yeah. So quickly recapping the MC Expresso ecosystem very briefly. So we have software, which is the MC Expresso SDK. And what that really is, is a collection of drivers and some middleware. Then there's more middleware, which is more specialist things from us and also from those partners. On that middleware, just to, this, is, this is the thing I yeah. sort of struggled to understand when we had our chat last yeah. time. Um, when we talk about middleware, it's not, it's not the low level stuff where you're interacting with the hardware. It's almost like services that sit on top of it, like uh, TCP, IP, that kind of thing. That would be your yeah. middleware, wouldn't it? Yeah, if we skip ahead a, a couple of slides and I'll come back to yeah, this. Sure. So um, this diagram uh, attempts to show that. So you yeah. have that kind of core and you see those standard uh, processor definitions and so on that are part of this other very big and confusing CM system. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they, they don't, they don't, they don't not, make it easy, do it's, they? It's just, there's a lot to yeah. it. To be fair to ARM, there's a lot of elements to it. So on top of that, you then have other abstractions around the peripheral drivers. Oh, graphics packs, yes, you mentioned graphics before the as well. The middle just talking about. So it's yeah. voice, graphics, TSN, yes, and the yes. stuff like you mentioned. So it's like, like software routines and software services that you can stick on top yeah. of your hardware. Libraries and, other, right. and yeah. other things. So we skip back again to where we, See, it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting, isn't it, how, go back 10, 20 years ago, microcontrollers were running basic firmware and everything was close to the metal. Yeah. You go forward and now they're running operating systems of software that runs on top of that. Yeah. They're almost becoming computers themselves. Yeah, I mean, the level of integration that they give, the performance they give, the amount of memory is really kind mm. of leaps and bounds. It, it is, it is remarkable. truly amazing, actually, to see how yeah. complicated it's become. Yeah, from the lowly 8051s. Yeah, and sort of yeah exactly. Where we are now. Yeah. So, yeah, but to skip back then on the M2 Expresso stuff, so an application code examples, we're talking about things that we deliver through the application yeah. launch plan and so on. So, on the tool side, very important to understand that. When we talk about IDEs, there's IDEs from NXP, like yes. the MS Express ID, and now the Visual Studio Code enablement. But IAR and ARM's Kyle tools are extremely important too. A lot of customers want those for safety certification or for I was other about very to say, I, I know IAR, they're really quite high end. Um, yeah. Uh, production level code where they have a yeah. lot of systems in integrated to make sure that the code doesn't fail. Yeah, all of yeah. these tools will give you production level, but they have a lot of sophistication, a long, long history, and Kyle as well. Um, and so they're a choice of yeah, yeah. Lot of large industrial OEMs and so on. Um, so they're very important to us. Then we have other tools like Freemaster, which is a visualization tool for uh, variables and control, uh, configuration tools for pins, clocks, setting up peripherals, security. Um, and then secured programming tools, and finally debug probes. So we have our own debug probes, and also we work with Sega and Dini. Yeah. So this this slide just talks about the streamlined MC Expresso flow. It's kind of the philosophy or the the high level um, scope of what we're trying to do. So the idea here is that the process going from an evaluation, saying you pick up an NXP board, you don't know if you're going to use it or someone else's. You want to get some examples out of our SDK or from a partner's open CMSYS pack or from the application launchpad, and you want to try it out. And then when you say, okay, I like this, I'm going to pick this processor, I want to build my proto, I just get that and I use the config tools to map across mm -hmm. to that hardware, and I do more refinement development on the software, then I move to my final production hardware, and the same tools, the same flows are there all the way along. In in you know things today or in the past, if you wanted to evaluate third party, you have to get their stuff. You have to oh I can make these samples run, or I got a, another one from another third party. Oh it's yeah. all different. You know this is yeah. making that very consistent, so you can move much faster and get your evaluations done much quicker. Um, so maybe on to the how. So the reason we don't have a how today is really around the fact that we've, yeah. in in we've innovated. Um, to make hardware very suitable for certain applications. But one example is this Garmin watch that has a, an IMX RT device in it, which is very optimized for power, but has graphics to that. And that would contrast and maybe an IMX RT 1170, which is all about one gigahertz performance, right? So this power is important, but nowhere near as important. 
And that leads to slightly different, I've seen see architectures with different IP inside, different peripheral origins. Which makes which makes it hard to develop a universal house. Exactly. Because, you know, because what one, one chip needs to be very good at one specific thing. Yeah. And another one needs to be also good at another specific thing, but trying to make them both work in the same way with the same software interface is a bit of a challenge. Yeah. And that's, so that's the problem you've faced historically. Exactly. And even, you know, there's going to be cases where that IP that's built for that application area yeah. is going to have special extensions to the API, meaning you can't really do a how because yeah. you'd either compromise things or you just couldn't do it from one platform to another. But in a lot of cases, customers aren't needing those pieces. So if they just want a plain vanilla I2C and UART and SPI and so on. They just want to make the code run exactly the same. I'm definitely one of those customers. I, yeah. yeah, yeah and that, there's sure. a lot. The majority of customers aren't like that. But you can still mix and match that with our new how and those, those yeah. device drivers too. So we recognize we need to do something about the how to really allow people to use our whole portfolio effectively. And so, as we approach that, we want to maintain our open source philosophy, yep. and meaning that we we want to use an API that's based on an open source standard. Now, we're not talking about those details yet. That will come second half of this year. Um, but we are actively working on this. We already have the candidate we're going to use. and um, Which we're not allowed to mention. Which we can't mention yet. <laughs> watch this space. Um, and so yeah. the benefit of doing that is portability for the customer so they know where NXP is not kind of trick them and lock them down yeah uh, but also uh, we get the inputs from lots of different community members the collective view of what the API definition should be so rather than us doing it that way and people say oh no that doesn't fit my use case or this doesn't work or that's not a good choice we have much more confidence they're going to get what they want so there's different elements this is where some of the confusion can come in because the Simsys name is used for things like a DSP standard a yeah. function library and definitions of device families, properties of an ARM core device, board support packs, and so on. What we're really focused on here is the middleware delivery. And so that will all be coming in July for all of the four IDs we're talking about. ARM already have it. Excuse me, ARM already have it. Um, M2 Express ID has the, a, an early version of it, but they'll all have it in July. Yeah. And there's also a centralized, um, it's not repository, it's not the right word, like a directory of all the, the packs are available yeah. that all of these tools can look at and the customers can therefore use to look at what's available. And again, and again, the, the, because of the because microcontrollers have become so advanced now, it's kind of like you're, you're not really focused on the hardware side anymore, you're, you're more focused on the software, so you want to have software services that you can easily pull in yeah. that make your life easier in terms of the coding side. So, like we said, 20 years ago, you might make you might have done like a bit banged I2C because that's what you think had to do. Yeah. Now it's like we don't even care about that. Now now I want my device to run things like graphical routines and stuff, yeah. and, yeah. and it just it really is moving away from the hardware. People are still bit banging, but yeah, it's both <laughs> of those things together. Yeah, bit banging is always a. God, I haven't been, I haven't bit banged in a long time. <laughs> you haven't lived, my friend. So. <laughs> All right. So Visual Studio Code. Um, so. This, this slide kind of shows some pretty screenshots, but also how we tried to make the experience better for customers. This is one thing I really appreciate is the, the, the use of Visual Studio yeah. Code. Such an excellent idea. That, I mean, the rise of it's been quite yeah. astronomical. It's pretty amazing. But So you could, you could have taken Visual Studio Code today and you could pull in all the pieces yourself and fix it all together. Um, we've done everything in the blue boxes here for you so that uh, that process is much easier. Yeah. So it's more like getting a conventional ID and installing it and getting going because all the pieces are there for you. But if you want to get fancy and do other things, go low level, yeah. you can do all of those things. Um, I, think, I think there's one thing which I quite appreciate with Visual Studio Code, and I think I mentioned this as well, is that a lot of IDEs out there tend to be based on things like Eclipse and Java. Yeah. And while, and while they are good. I they're, they're good in terms of like uh, what they can offer the customer. They tend to be quite slow, or they tend to be quite resource hungry. Yeah. Whereas Visual Studio Code, it's very very light. Yeah. But it's also and it's extremely responsive as well. It's a lot newer technology, but yeah, yeah Eclipse does have a lot of good things about it, and it is extensible too. But yeah. Yeah. It is older technology. So. Yeah. We do, we do hear that from customers. But we are continuing them to express the ID. We're not going to pull the rug from the customers. No, who love I think it, I know. You know. So. 
So to summarize things, you know, our aim here is that best developer experience in the market. That is our goal and that's why I wanted to say to people, this is all part of a big picture, a big picture strategy that we have. So the things that are new are the MC Expresso uh, for Visual Studio Code that will be in general release in July. We have beta program underway right now. Um, a streamlined delivery of partner code through open synthesis packs on all the IDEs we're supporting. Application launch plan, which will be coming in May, and that's where customers will be able to find examples from our experts to help them. And then the open source hardware abstraction, which is going to come in the second half of the year. Um, so we'll which is I'm quite looking forward to, to see, yeah, it, to see how that works out. That. Yes, yeah, definitely. Oh, so anyway, that was a fantastic um, slideshow, um, and I and I really appreciate that you took the time to see us today. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you, and talk thank you to very much. All right, thank you. Thanks.